Hey everybody, I'm David Henry from LearnStageLighting.com and in this video I want to talk to you about the Martin M-Series and MPC Software Effects Engine. Now if you've landed on this video, chances are you've started to play around in the effects engine on the Martin MPC software or an M-Series console. And you may have thrown up your hands in the air and gone, I don't get this. And to tell you the truth, at first I didn't get it either. And even the first time I recorded this video, I didn't get it. But as I've been able to dive in and really work with their effects engine and begin to actually understand it, it's all coming together and making sense. And I want to share that with you guys because I know that I see constantly on the Facebook page, people are always writing in and asking and talking about how they they like the console, they think it's cool, the M Touch is a great value, but and the consoles are a good value too. Um, but the M Touch is just extraordinary, and but they don't get the stinking effects engine. And so here we're gonna talk about effects in this part one. I'm gonna go over intensity effects and then um, apply it to you know, color or zoom or whatever other, any zero to 100 type of parameter. And then in the second video, we're going to talk about pan tilt effects because there's some extra nuances and some extra weirdness there um, that may not be apparent to you if you're used to the effects engine in other consoles um, like Hogs or Grand Amaze, which is what I'm going to be most familiar with personally. And so that's kind of my frame of reference where I'm coming from. And, and how I'm teaching this effects engine to you. So, with all that out of the way, first thing we're gonna do is select some fixtures. I'm doing this in 2D view just so y'all can see it really easily. Got my fixtures selected. First thing I'm gonna do is pop down here. Gonna bring up my intensity to 50%, which is the center. Um, this suggestion was made to me by the, the Martin team because um, it, with the way that the effects engine works and the swing value um, generates things, placing your intensity and, and other um, factors that you're going to be modifying with the effects engine at 50% as a base point is a really good idea uh, and can help get the smoothest effects. Again, you know, once you really grasp the effects engine and, and understand how it works, if you want to set your base point elsewhere, that's understandable, but but to start, just place it at 50% and uh, see what happens. Now, we're gonna pop over to effects here, and you can see we've got a couple parameters available to us. We've got swing, speed, mode, and multiplier, and that's what, that's what we can see here on this first pane. And so, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn up the speed to maximum, or the swing rather, to maximum. And I'm gonna turn the speed up a little so we can start to see these lights turning on and off. I'm also going to tilt them, which I didn't do so previous to this, so that you can see what's going on in the 2D view. So hold on a second. There, give them a little highlight, perfect. All right, so now we can all see what's going on. It'll pop back to effects here. From intensity, it's very important that you first go to the parameter you want to modify with the effects engine and then go back if you're in this view because it's going to let you know right here that, okay, I last touched intensity, we're doing the effects on intensity. Say I touch beam, okay, you know, I was in zoom, speed effect, speed on zoom. So that's very important. Let's get turn the swing up turn the speed on and you can begin to see as I turn highlight off that the effect is taking place the lights are turning on and off all together kind of what you would expect as you punch in an effect manually and, and not through the uh, pre-programmed effects macros so now we're going to talk about mode mode is pretty simple just like a lot of other consoles you know you got a sine wave here you got a backward sine wave here, so um, the mode is going to determine the direction of the effect in the M-Series software. That's not a separate parameter um, in the effects engine. It's, it's part of the mode, and so that's important. Then you got this guy, which is uh, kind of a 
a little bit of a ramp kind of looking thing um, as it happens. This is the opposite of that. And and really, um, the way these are a little hard for me to understand coming from other consoles, but the most beneficial way to look at it is to look at this graph up here. So your base point is right in the center, and then the wave, the mode rather, modifies that. So you see, this one, if my base point's at 50, is a ramp kind of up to 100 and back. This is a ramp down. This is a chase. And because it goes up and above, above as well as below the baseline, we can see that that's a 0 to 100% chase. And then you got this, which is a chase 100 to 50 and the opposite. some more different curves and so there's a whole bunch of them go explore them for yourself but i'm gonna go jump back to the good old sine wave um, and then we're gonna talk about the fourth parameter here multiplier very simple this is about the speed i do believe correct yes that is about the speed you press that and it multiplies the speed so pretty typical, pretty simple. Good if you're, you know, calculating things on BPM and and maybe you're using the the master speed um, control and you want some effects to run at twice the speed, some effects to run at half the speed compared to other effects. You can use this multiplier to gain that. Now when we go to the effects timing here, we've got wave and step. And this is where things can get weird, right? So let me turn this effect back up to full. And so wave and effect can get very weird, um, but it's actually not as complicated as you might think. So when you've got a wave effect, this is kind of, if I set this to four, because I got four fixtures, you see I'm working through the fixtures evenly distributed, right? So my, my chase is moving across nice and evenly throughout my fixtures. Kind of like if I was on a hog, or an MA and I grabbed the offset and I hit the clicked fan and spun that wheel you know on a hog or just spun that offset wheel um, on an MA then I would get something that looked like this now we'll turn that off step on the other hand if I turn that to four it looks very similar but it's different so what's different well instead of taking the effect and applying it evenly over all the fixtures, each fixture is getting it, the effect and then it moves on to the next fixture. So, as you can see, there's a little more separation between all the fixtures or, or groups of fixtures. Say I set it to two. Oops. <laughs> or the groups of fixtures. You know, it does one group, then the other group. One group, then the other group. Whereas if I were to set wave to two, it goes one, fades to two. You can see it's just a little bit smoother because of the way that this software is designed. And so it's just an important distinction to know that that wave is distributing the effect across the lights evenly. And step is where they're taking turns. That's the best way I can find to explain it. Um, it's how when that was explained to me the other day um, by Paul and Ofer in the Facebook group and uh, on the phone, it's a, I said, okay, this makes sense now. So, so wave evenly distributed, step taking steps. And it's very important to note that these are exclusive of each other, right? So you only get one of them. You can't dial in a wave and a step. Okay, so the way I just did that, I dialed in wave and then step. Right now, it's using step. If I clicked over here, I'm using wave. And, and the reason behind that is is that, you know, they're, they're modifying the same thing. And what do they modify? Well, that's the second pane here. And that is the delay, shift, and weight. And as I've played around with these and, and talked with the guys at Martin and posted things on the Facebook group, um, I've determined that this is something I don't really need to understand. Um, basically, it's the parameters under 
the parameters of wave and step. And it's it's kind of an abstraction layer down of, of how the effects engine generates those things. And so as I get deeper into this, I'll, I'll probably mess with them and just kind of try to figure it out. But honestly, I can make the effects that I want to using wave and step and also this grouping mask. So this is kind of the last portion of the effects engine for these linear um, type of values, the non-pan tilt values. And you can see here, you click this, and we've got a bunch of masks. Now, the first masks, two, three, four, five, and six, or two through five rather, um, are the typical masks that you get for selecting the fixtures. So if I hit every X and it's selected to four, then only my first fixture selected and I can hit the next key like I am right now and it's selecting each fixture and so in the mask so this is really useful because then I could take this one set it to a step of two I don't know why I'd do that uh, modify some values and then go to the other ones and uh, be able to modify the fixtures individually now where this gets exciting however is the second group the fan so now if I did fan for example, mirror per X, set it to two, which is what I can do because I only got four fixtures, and then set this step per X to two. You can see I've now got a mirrored effect. All right, it's very important the um, the command that the the console is looking for is to set the mask first and then set the wave or step. And if you do it the other way it's not going to take effect. So you need to click back over here, um, even if you've already got what you want assigned, after selecting a mask in order to make it live. Besides the mirror per X, there's this divide per X. So I press that. You see, okay, I divided my rig in two based on selection order. Similarly, say I go to block of X, of course, that's not going to show the fixtures well, but divide by X was dividing down the middle. Now this, instead of that, is doing two fixtures at a time. So if I had six, it would go one, two, three, four, five, six, as opposed to divide by X. If I had that set to two and I had six fixtures, it would go one, two, three, and then four, five, six, and it would alternate between those like this. Now the last one on there, fan every X is kind of the classic every other fixture right so if i got that selected for two then fixture one then two then one then two if i selected a three you can see and select back in here i get some funkiness because i've only got four fixtures but um that's it would do every third fixture and that's how it would work and so i hope that's a good brief overview to you guys about the effects engine i think i covered pretty much everything for linear effects um here i'm looking over my notes quick and um in our next video we're going to talk about pan tilt effects and and how they work in the m series software and how you can use them to create all the fun ballyhoos and movements and stuff like that that you want to make for your shows so i'll see you guys over there thanks